Shalom Saints, Shalom Saints and future subscribers of the YouTube channel A-O-S-D-C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R as well as R-P-K, that's Resurrection Prophecy and Kingdom as well as King Don L, K-I-N-G-D-O-N-E-L on TikTok I know we have unearthed a lot of mysteries but we got a lot more, you know, Lord's willing so tonight, let's talk about the feast days you know, we got Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits Feast of Weeks, Trumpets, Atonement, and Tabernacles. But these are these feast days, once you put them together in chronological order, they're telling a story. And most people know they're telling the story about Messiah. But I'm here to tell you that it's telling the story about the two Messianic figures. One, man made from dust. The other, man made from dust heavenly or the image of God two different messiahs the feast days is talking about their story so let's get ready to embark let's walk as we unearth another mystery of the feast days now I'm not going to break down in detail the feast days you can go to my YouTube channel and see the, the detailed breakdown but I will show the illusions okay first feast day Passover the death of the firstborn. Let's see if we can find the illusions of that between the two messianic figures, one from earth, the other from heaven. Talking to the firstborn son, Adam. Genesis 2, verse number 17. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat. For in whatever day you eat from it, you shall die by death. Genesis 3 and 6. What does it state? So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree beautiful to contemplate, she took its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. That's the death of the firstborn. Let's see the death of the new Adam, or the last Adam. Gen uh, Matthew 27 and 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. That's the death of the heavenly Adam, the death of the firstborn there. So Passover and the two Messianic figures. Let's go to the unleavened bread now. Let's see. Unleavened bread. Bread without leaven. A body that has no sin. Uh, Genesis 2, 7. Then God formed man out of dust from the uh, then God formed man out of the dust from the ground and breathed in his face the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Then the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man he formed. Two things not made with hand, Adam, as well as the garden, not made with hands, not made with human hands, all by God. Uh, Adam, a man, a body with no sin, getting all the inheritance and the benefits that God had bestowed upon him. After Christ resurrected, and they thought he was a spirit, Luke 24, 39, Behold, my hands and my feet, that, is, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Christ resurrected, he's showing off a body, a body free from decay, a body free from leaven, a body free from sin. Okay, so that's the second one. What about first fruits? The beginning of the offerings dedicated to the Lord. Genesis 2 and 7. Then God formed man out of the dust from the ground. So you see that right there? That agricultural language. The man, Adam, formed from the dust of the ground and brought up just like uh, plants. Adam was the first fruit. He was the first one. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The first one that the Lord allows to come up and actually receive the inheritance uh, in the in pre preparation of the new heaven and earth that is. So we got the first fruits. What about the Feast of Weeks, what they call Pentecost? Uh, when the spirit comes out and the Lord is able to use those that they get the spirit he's able to use that uh, uh, situation to create a covenant 
a, a, a covenant, a new covenant compared to what they had before the spirit. So let's see if, and that new covenant brought an inheritance. So let's see from the two Messianic figures, uh, this uh, Feast of Weeks, this Pentecost occurring. Genesis 2-7 again, because Genesis 2-7 is real heavy with understanding how the Bible works. Genesis 2-7, then God formed man out of the dust from the ground and breathed in his face the breath of life and man became a living soul. Matthew 3, 16, when he has when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him and he saw a spirit of God. He saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and enlightening upon him. Oh, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Both sons of God receive the spirit after coming out of the water. Go back to Genesis uh, 2 and uh, to get that really, really understood. I also got it on my YouTube channel. So we got the uh, Pentecost right there. Uh, once they was both able to receive a covenant or a relationship with the Most High on a more intimate level. So now we got trumpets, the unknown day, um, what they call, where the new moon, where the slither of the new moon happened, or the new years, a new creation, as well as judgment. So let's see that. Genesis 3, 23, 23. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of pleasure to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So now Adam is going into a new reality outside of God, a new heaven and earth. Luke 24, 46. Then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. So we see right there, the Lord went uh, through a type of judgment in which he had to do in order for a new heaven and a new earth to follow him as well. Next, we got atonement. There's no atonement without blood. Something has to die to cover the sins of something else so it can, uh, so it can remain alive. Uh, Genesis 3.21. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made garments of skins. And clothed them, saying that something had to die. Whatever held those skins, it had to die in order to cover the uh, individuals, Adam and Eve, who just transgressed. Hebrews 10 and 10. By that will, we have, sanct we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So as we can see, Adam and Eve, they did not bear one another's burden. So something had to die on their behalf. Christ bared the burdens of his children, of his brothers, of his sisters, of his creation. Therefore, he died for them bearing their burdens. And the last one, tabernacles, when each person is in the proximity of God and God is in their proximity. They're all together on one stage. Genesis 3.8. Then they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden that afternoon, and Adam and his wife hid themselves within the tree in the middle of the garden from the presence of the Lord God. Hebrews 10, 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. So both was in God's proximity, the, the, the dwelling place of God. God dwelled with them, they dwelt with God. That's tabernacles. So Paul made it clear in 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 49. And as we have borne the image of the man of the dust, that's Genesis 2, Adam, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, that's Genesis 1, Adam. So as we have been from the dust, we shall all, we will always, or we shall also do the things of the heavenly man. Sorry about that. So in other words, the feast days was an uh, understanding, was a story of the two messiahs, one from earth, the other from heaven. And as the Bible was showing how we as mankind interacts more with the man from the dust and how we need to be transformed mentally, physically, spiritually to operate after the image of God or the man from heaven, which Christ was the perfect example of. So those feast days are very important to understand how all things are fulfilled. Subscribe to the channel.